It's often said that women are more verbal than men, and recent studies prove that when it comes to social media, women are indeed talking more than their male counterparts. In fact, women now make up 64% of Facebook users, 58% of Twitter users, and a whopping 82% of Pinterest users. So how can social media and technology be used as a tool to empower women worldwide? The two women you're about to meet are using technology to do just that. Yael Swerdlaw is co-founder of the Women's Empowerment Foundation. She created the nonprofit to redefine feminist ideals and help women assume greater leadership roles in media and politics. And Patricia Dow, the managing director of Girls in Tech Los Angeles, which works to empower, educate, and inspire girls and women to pursue careers in technology. And I want to welcome both of you to the broadcast. Uh, Let's start with your foundation. Uh, what prompted you to start it? Well, I was approached by uh, my co-founder, Ilana Shoshan, who is an Israeli-American activist, and she's a former Miss Israel, actually, and she was uh, elected Miss Israel of all time uh, in 2010 for her work with women empowerment in Israel, and um, decided that it was very, very important for women to be able to understand that they do not have any limitations whatsoever. So Ilana's vision was to change the way women think of themselves as opposed to just thinking that they have to shoot for the corner office and then like feel guilty being there or things like that. So we decided to address the history of feminism and we and how it and how it had been rebranded to be something bad. So we decided to address that and we decided to um, talk about the way women dress and just really approach things that people were sort of skirting around at the time. So How was it rebranded that it was bad, do you think? Over the years, it was rebranded after, for example, the uh, Anita Hill um, uh, hearings in, in 1991. Um, the newspapers were told that they needed to start running more uh, feminine-oriented stories versus feminist-oriented mm. because women were getting too powerful and they wanted to have women concentrate on fashion and society and Dear Abby and recipes. They were very, very nervous about women uh, taking political control over their own lives, their own bodies, all of that. Mm, interesting. Uh Patricia, I'm not going to leave you out. I'm, I'm coming to you now. <laughs> she knows more than me anyway. So. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of the, because the, 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 I know it's going to come up, STEM and yeah. STEAM, is that mm -hmm. right? Uh, what, yeah. what are they and, and how do they factor into all of this? Yeah, so STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And STEAM, you just add the A in, and that um, means art, really. And so there's a really great big movement within um, girls' education and women empowerment around STEM and um, really encouraging them to go into these fields, right? Because historically, STEM and technology was meant for, for men, right? Um, hard skills were valued like coding and engineering. And these days, I mean, technology isn't just a, a field, right? It's part of everything that we do. So it's opened up a lot more opportunities for women. That doesn't mean that women can't code or engineer, right? But if you can't do those type of things, which I can't, um, it gives a lot of opportunities for uh, women to take roles, maybe marketing roles within tech organizations and be part of it. Um, right now in Silicon Valley, actually, six out of the top 10 uh, companies there are led by women CMOs, which is great because marketing is playing a really good factor or big factor in a lot of these tech companies today. How does that change the dynamic within a company? I mean, it, it, obviously having that kind of empowerment and having women in these kind of lead roles, how do you think that changes the face of the company or how the company addresses things, how they deal with things? And uh, Patty, I'll start with you first and we'll move down the couch. Yeah, I mean, um, I think in a lot of ways, um, what used to be seen as soft skills like um, mm -hmm. relationship building, communication, interpersonal skills, those things really didn't fit into the tech world. But now, I mean, they're so important, especially in a collaborative environment where it's not about putting your head down and just coding anymore, right? right. Those type of things are easy to do with all of the open source type of uh, resources you can to put things together. Now it's all about how do you take this technology how do you take this robot? How do you take this game and, and send it out to the public and get consumers to use it? And I think women are really great at doing mm -hmm. just that, mm -hmm. connecting to the public. Yeah. 
You know, you, you were talking about Dear Abby and the, the feminine articles and all of that and trying to reverse that. Um, it's interesting, recently, and I want to get your thoughts on this, Lego uh, recently kind of... That. You saw that. Saw okay, that. so it's fantastic. It's, well, tell me about it. Why don't you right. tell the viewers what's happened with that? Well, from what I understand, the uh, Lego has decided to highlight women scientists now. I think women are creating. Yeah, there's going to be three scientists yeah. now that they're coming out that are women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is just spectacular. Um, but I'm, they got pressure from women's groups to do that. They got pressure from women's groups, and, and frankly, it's about time. And so, unfortunately, there's been such a. Um, uh, sexualization of women and and focusing on you know unrealistic body standards and unrealistic beauty standards and unrealistic fashion standards and all of that and women are utilizing social media more and more to um, not to fight back but to but just to have a voice and say no this doesn't work with me I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to buy that or I don't want to look like that uh, the Dove Beauty campaign was a spectacular example, the real beauty campaign mm -hmm. of women utilizing social media on YouTube and on Facebook and on Pinterest and Twitter and everything, saying that they don't want to be uh, pigeonholed to look a certain way when it's unrealistic and unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And that's a fantastic uh, use of social media for empowerment. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Lego example, I mean, the way yeah. that they actually um, voiced their opinion to Lego was through technology. It was exactly. through change.org. Exactly. Right? And then when you think about a, a little girl who's no longer just playing with Barbies, now she's playing with women scientists, it does kind of yes. get into their head and it makes them think differently too, right? I mean... Oh, ab oh absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, w with girls in tech, um, a lot of what we focus on not only is the, the professional aspect, but it's also the, the mentoring aspect. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've partnered with Girl Scouts in LA to do these workshops where um, we, we bust in girls from, a lot of them from underserved areas where they can't really get access to these STEM programs. And we'll teach them how to clean up oil spills, how to pull DNA from a banana, how to create a circuit board. And it's just so amazing to see how excited they mm -hmm. are about it, how engaged they are. And we receive letters from them saying, hey, when I go to college, this is what I want to mm -hmm. do. Guys yeah. have been at this for a long time, and we've done a really lousy job, so it's about time you take over. But <laughs> let, let, me, let me ask about like some of the things that you know, like perhaps maybe might be approached differently by women. Uh, poverty, uh, mm -hmm. global security, mm -hmm. world peace. Um, how might they approach things differently than a male, would you say? I think women by nature are more inclusive and they and more oriented yeah. towards team building uh -huh. and and I think that that makes a real big difference. There's, you know, conferences all over the world on peace and on climate change and on all the different in poverty and all of the issues and there's unfortunately still a preponderance of participants that are men. They're standing up there and saying, "Well, I think we need to change do this. We need to do that." And women are are far more I think creative in their solutions. That's power from a you know political standpoint, but you, you're out there in the business world. You've been an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. uh, is it tougher for a woman to get by? And and, and what do you bring to the table? Uh, and, and, <laughs> I, I, I know the answer to that. And yeah. by your laughter, I what? know that was a pretty yeah. dumb question. But but That's but clearly, <laughs> but you, but you've been able to navigate it though. Obviously, you've been successful yeah. at it. Uh, what do you, what did you bring to the table? How did you approach it? Uh, what separated you from perhaps a, a lot of women? Probably She's a rock star. Are, what do you yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, but I mean, um, uh, so yes, it, it is a little, I find it a little bit more difficult, um, but it's obviously not impossible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I had my own uh, company and it was a tech platform that we launched, it was actually quite intimidating. To The building of the platform wasn't, but the bringing it to investors, which were oh. predominantly male. Oh, yeah. Um, and finding mentors that would, mm -hmm. would help me, which, you know, in the Silicon Valley space are predominantly male, is a little intimidating at times. And you kind of second guess yourself when you know for a fact that your platform and your business is awesome, right? right. And yep. so um, those are kind of the hurdles that, that, that realistically are there, whether it's in my head or, 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 or whether, you know, it, these men are pushing back is, is I, I actually think it's both, right? Uh -huh. Um, but um, those were probably the, the hardest things that I had to, to go through, through the process of, of launching my own company. So if there's young girls watching this program right now, uh, what would be the thoughts that you'd give them in terms of like so, some key words of advice uh, heading out there? Let's say they want to be an entrepreneur when they get a little older. Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, 
I think at the end of the day, it's better to fail than to never try at all, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the best way for you to build your confidence. And you know, when it comes to being an entrepreneur or going into the STEM fields or building your own company, it's all about confidence. And once you have that confidence, you can succeed at anything. And it's, it's truly, that is, that is the root of it. And with a lot of these STEM workshops that we do with these young girls, um, it, it is about teaching them about the STEM fields and, um, you know, again, how to pull DNA from the banana, but really it's about them feeling very confident that, oh my gosh, I built this circuit board. Mm -hmm. You know, I can actually do this. And this is something that I can, you know, do when I get older. Right? Yoel, you yeah. get the last word. Uh, oh, your oh. thoughts, same thing. Uh, if a young girl's out there watching, it's your chance to empower. It's my chance to empower. Bas don't let anyone tell you that you can't succeed. Yep. And that's really it. You can do anything and be anyone that you want to be. There is absolutely no limitations whatsoever. All right. Well, thank you both so much. It's been great fun. Thank, thank you. you very much.